Good morning once again. This is Fedna Support, and today we are going to deal up with the two important modules of Fedina. That's the library module and the transport module. Starting up with the library module. So to access the library module, you can log into your dashboard and click upon library. Once you are click, once you have clicked the library icon on the dashboard, you will be redirected to a page which is the library home page so to start up with you need to do first of all some kinds of settings for the library on clicking library settings you'll be asked to select a course and then on selecting the course you'll be able to see some kind of settings there where you'll be find you'll find a button called add new so this particular thing helps you to create some library card setting for a particular course so the course that I selected is UKG and the library card settings is so if I'm selecting a category here let us say local and the books that can be issued that can be issued to this particular category that has to be entered so let us say I'm entering five categories so five books can be issued to every person in this UKG course for a period of 30 days so once this has been done you will be able to add some categories for or some kind of library settings for the category so once the setting is done now we'll start upon to the manage books part of library management plugin so while clicking upon manage books you will be able to see see the library manage books page where if you have already created some library books here then it then uh, all those library books will be available will be shown in a table here so since you, if you will be using it for the first time you will be getting only this thing as blank and the add books part is to be used so in this library module you need to add the books so that you would be able to manage the library efficiently so first of all you need to enter the book name sorry the book number and the title title of the book followed by the author name let us say I am entering a title and the author name and then specify it whether it's a reference book or not so moreover if you have some other tags let us say this particular book comes in some other different tag so you can create your own tag like say fiction and the number of copies bought for this particular book is to be entered so I would be having some 10 books so on clicking upon this you will be able to create another book so this is all about creating the books moreover if you would like to have some additional data into your library setting so you need to add that from the library additional manage book additional detail let us say you want to keep a track record of all the additional items like the barcode and the ISBN number so then all you need to do just click upon the name text box here type the name of the additional detail and then the status whether it should be an active or inactive and mention whether it's mandatory or not moreover the input method can also be entered as input method can be of three types a text box a select box and a check box so having done these settings in the additional details so while managing additional books you will be able to see the barcode and this and the ISBN number So you need to enter the 
barcode and the ISBN number followed by the save button and your data will be saved so as you can see that these books have been created with a different book number the name the author number the title and the status whether it's available or not so this is how you can add your new books once these books has been added so if you would like to search a book you can even search it using the search icon from the home page which says let us say you want to search a book with the number of with the book number and I have the book number as B9 and I'm selecting the book number I'll be redirected to the link where I will be able to see the name of the book and the status whether it's available or not To know further details over the book like if you want to reserve the book or issue this book as if the status is available so if you want to reserve this book for some student you can reserve it so you need to click upon this and this book has been reserved by the admin user so the current user will be able to reserve the book moreover if you want to issue this book you will be able to issue it As this book has been reserved so we'll be searching some other book like the one that we have created so you need to issue or click upon issue this book and then this name of this employee sorry the admission number of the employee or the student to which this book belongs to which this to which the student is to, this book is to be allotted to so on click on typing the admission number I get a name of the student along with the batch that he is in so on clicking into it this book will be this data of the student will be copied along as will be associated with the book and on clicking issue this book will be issued for that particular person now once this book has been issued uh, if at a point of time if you would like to return the book just click upon return book and then the book number on clicking upon return this book will be returned to the library again further if you want to issue the book the issue book can also be done using the link from the library home page called issue book and on searching the book you will be able to get the availability of the book so this way you will be able to issue the book again Now at a further tab point of time if you would like to have the move, movement log of a book so you need to click upon movement log and then the date you need to select so on selecting that particular date all the books issued for a particular date will be be shown in this page moreover if you want to export the data as a CSV you will be able to do so by clicking upon export a CSV so whenever you are trying to trying to click export a CSV a CSV format file will be upload will be downloaded into your system and you will be able to keep a track record of what is going on with the CSV file format so this you can even keep a backup of your data um, using the CSV format file generated at a further point of time if you would like to renew a book you just need to click upon the book name let us say and this thing has already been taken by some person so if you want to renew the book to uh, or extend its due date to some point of time then just click one just you need to click upon the due date the improved due date and on clicking ok this book will be renewed to a further extended date 
So this is all about the library management. Finally, wrapping up the module with the library refines part. So on Kikamon library refines, you'll be able to see the three boxes which say start date, end date, and the pay. So if you want to uh, click the, if you want to have a track record of all the library finds collected from the start date to the end date, then you will be able to. You just need to enter the name, enter the dates, and then the all the library finds collected for that period will be listed. So as you can see that I have collected a fine amount from this particular student with the amount of hundred rupees and the payment date just today. So moreover, if you want to keep a track on what or how all things are on what transactions has been done. So this thing will also be reflected in the transactions part two. Let's click upon report and on seeing today's report, this will be available in the today's transaction. So as you can see, lab, library account has been detected, has been come in as an income and on further clicking upon this library account, you'll be able to see further details about the transaction made. So this is all about the library transaction part and the library module has been finished. Now we will be going up to the transport module again. So to know about the transport module, the transport module can be accessed from, from the more menu and can also be accessed from the transport icon on the dashboard. So once you click upon the transport icon, you will be able to see the transport homepage. The transport homepage says the routes, set routes, vehicles, transport and transport fee. So once you have clicked upon set routes, you will be seeing a table where all the routes have been mentioned. But if you are using it for the first time, this table won't be won't present there. Rather you will find this link add route so here you need to add different routes here like the destination is to be added and then the cost and then if you want to mention it as main route you can mention this so you need to enter the destination then the cost for this and then the main route on clicking upon save this thing will be saved further using this plugin you would be able to add new vehicles let us say if you want to add a new vehicle so click or just click upon add vehicle and the vehicle number, the main route and the number of seats. The vehicle number is to be entered and then the number of seats available for that and on hitting upon save you will be able to save the different routes. Yes, coming up with the transport details part. So furthermore if you would like to have the details of the transport so let us say if you want to check upon any details of a student so on clicking upon the name of the student you will be able to see the uh, details regarding the same moreover if you would like to see an advanced part of details so on clicking upon the on selecting the vehicle you will be able to see what all things can be done what all students have been going using that vehicle then comes the transport fee part in transport pay again, you need to manage the fee collections along with the pay fees is to be dealt up with and the defaulters can also be viewed up. It's the same way that we do in the in the finance part. Coming back to the last part of the webinar, that's the hostel module. So hostel module is the most important plugin plugin or the most important add-ons that you that can be used up with Fedina. So to click upon 
first of all you need to click upon the hostel to access the hostel module and then the hostel link is to be clicked so on clicking hostel you will be able to see that a add hostel link here so here you can add all the hostel details here so on clicking upon add hostel you will be able to see the hostel name the hostel type and the other information let us say if you want to create another hostel with the name of hostel new let us say and it's for gens and the other information regarding is to be entered and on clicking upon save your hostel will be created now if you would like to manage some wardens or add rooms into this so you uh, you need to do this you can do this here so I'm clicking upon manage wardens you need to add the add a new warden for this so first of all the hostel is to be selected and then the department and then the employ and I'm clicking upon save a warden has been a warden will be uh, the pro um, prospective warden will be assigned to the particular hostel then comes the add room part so if you want to add a room so you can do so by using the add room link here and then you need to click upon the room number so the room number is to be entered let us say you have the room number must start up with something like one and the student per room allotted is three and the rent that is to be fixed for this particular rooms in the for the rooms in this particular hostel is let us say hundred and the number of rooms can be is to be entered as let us say 20 so this way the hostel new has been created with the selected number of rooms so on selecting the hostel you will be able to see the details regarding the rooms and the number of hostels available number of rooms available in this hostel This is all about the manage wardens and the add rooms. Further, if you would like to edit or uh, edit any data regarding the hostel, so when clicking upon edit, you will be able to do so. This is all about how hostels can be done. And then now comes the rooms. So when clicking upon rooms, as you can see that you need to select the hostel and then you if you want to edit some data regarding a particular room then you can do so by clicking upon clicking upon the edit and the room number and student per room For, moreover if you want to change the, some of the data like the students allotted per room and the rent then you can also do so by clicking upon the edit link for the corresponding rooms then comes the room allocation part in room allocation you will be able to allocate a room to some student so let us say if you want to allocate a student with the name of Abhishek so you need to type the name of the student and then the hostel to which he is to be allotted and then and then the room to which he is to be allotted, allocated so I'm clicking upon allocate the data for the corresponding room will be changed up and this way you will be able to allocate students to your hostel rooms now comes the fee collection part 
so in fee collection you need to create the fee collection first of all so here only those best students who have been in a hostel will be listed up so let us say you want to create a fee collection with the name of December hostel collection you need to enter the start date and end date and the batches to which this fee collection is to be applicable so I'm clicking upon create this fee collection date will be created so now if you want to view this you can select upon view and the batch so this way you will be able to see all the fee collection dates created till, till date so this is all about how the fee collection dates can be managed up now once the fee collection dates has been managed you will be able to pay the students fees so on clicking upon hostel fee pay you need to select the class and the select and the collection date now these all students will be will be liable to pay the hostel collection so this hostel collection or the fee collection date that you will be making up will be it will be available for all the students in the batch that we have selected up in the previous step so further if you would like to pay the student fees from here you can select the pay fees link and then the payment mode and the rest of the things like is done in a normal finance fees pay fees part so on clicking upon pay fees this amount of fees will be paid for the particular student account moreover the hostel fee pay can also be done by using this pay pay student fee so here you need to select the student name so the student name is to select is to be entered and on clicking upon student you will be able to you will be able to select the fee collection date and then on selecting pay fees you will be able to pay the fees for the students so the hostel fee pays comes along with the two types of fee pay fee payments one the first way will help you to pay the fees by name wise for each of the student and second way will help you to pay the student fees by course wise or the batch wise now coming to the last part of the hostel dash hostel dashboard we have the hostel fee defaulters where you will be able to keep a track of all the students who have not paid the fees for a particular fee collection date so here I need to select the batch and then the fee collection date so I will here is a list of all students who have not paid the fees so this completes the slide overview of the ha hostel library and transport module now we as now we'll be dealing with the queries as this webinar has been completed please put forward your queries if you have any right now